Commissioner Barry. Here. Commissioner Richardson. Here. Commissioner Paris. Here. Commissioner Lawrence. Here. Commissioner Jones, Here. absent. Commissioner Gribble. Here. Commissioner Setzer. Here. So we have a quorum. Could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and happy holidays over, and happy weather, for heaven's sake. Till, well, now we can't be complaining. We're not in New York, either. <laughs> um, uh, well, all of our good thoughts, I'm sure, go to Lauren and his family this evening, and, and we'll think about him in the coming days. It's a tough time. Um, I want to take a brief moment to I'm a, I'm a very uh, committee-oriented person. I like the way committees get things done, but I have to also commend the commissioners for their individual initiative. Um, I was thinking this over the other day and how much we've accomplished in terms of just individuals taking charge and getting an idea and following through on it. Nothing epitomizes that more than Pat Setzer and the sing-along. Uh, a very successful sing-along, which I think we'll talk a little more about. Um, but that was all her baby, and she got the idea, and she ran with it, and it was a great success. Um, and Bob, we don't have it on the uh, agenda, but we'll put it under old business, the little library thing, which is another thing where he's just gotten an idea and taken with it, and it'll happen. I'm sure it will happen. Um, and uh, the people on the uh, working group and all the workshops that you all do, uh, your very own selves, Sharon and Laura, I'm looking over at you, um, which is, is not a necessity, but it's a great blessing, and, and we appreciate all your work. Um, I have to also mention Mike and Melissa always, but Melissa has been particularly helpful the last few weeks because Mike's been gone. Um, and really, all your work on the exhibits has been terrific. And your new idea, which we'll talk some more about, could be very terrific, too. So I'm just sort of saying Happy New Year and uh, expressing my appreciation for all of you. Um, so uh, there are no public comments because there isn't a member of the public in the audience, so we can skip that. Uh, we have no presentations that I'm aware of. Mr. Eakey, do we have anything, any surprise presentations? We do not tonight. Okay, okay. So we'll go right to the committee updates um, and start. Bob, will you talk about the Public Art Committee? Sure. Sure, we had the uh, meeting January 3rd, and um, from my brief notes, we uh, discussed the upcoming meeting with the mural artist uh, JT Daniels, and we'll be including the members of the park and rec board to, to this meeting so they can give us their input what they what they see what they like their feelings about what he presents his concepts <clears throat> let's see we're yeah oh yeah the naturally all commissioners are invited to this meeting that we're going to set up with uh, Mr. Daniels, but we did want to pass a, a special invitation to you. You've got some insight from the school side of things, and you can help maybe help navigate some, some avenues that, that uh, Mr. Daniels might not think of, or you'll see something that's a red flag, or say, hey, whoa, you know, or go talk to this person. There's a good contact, so we'd really like it if you, if you can make it, but we'll, we'll keep you posted, and when we get a, a date and time, we'll let you know. Okay. Uh, oh, as um, Harriet mentioned, the December 11th sing-along at St. Paul's Methodist Church. Is that, was that right? Is that St. Paul's Methodist? Oh, yeah, that was a huge success. It was nearly standing room only. It was lots of singing, lots of, you, I imagine you could hear them down, you know, 
all the way to Sonic. We were so loud. We got to be so loud. It was it was great. A huge thank you to all involved. We have some thank you correspondence we'd like all the commissioners to sign after this meeting. And a huge thank you again to Pat for putting it all together. It was, it was wonderful. Can't wait to do it again next year. And this next time I'll get hot chocolate. I forgot to get the hot chocolate. Uh, <clears throat> We did discuss uh, generating some concepts for designs for the large banners. I think, do we have 12, uh, Mike, 12 available that we can put along 58? And just, I guess, starting to generate some ideas. What do we want it to say? And is this going to be the overall Raymore-centric message rather than an event message? I know Hawk Ridge can be, might be kind of close to when we produce this, so maybe that might come into effect. Maybe it won't, I'm not sure. But we started talking about that. Um, we also want to talk about redoubling our efforts to get local artists to exhibit here in some of the fine places we have around here in, in center view. But Pat had a great idea for, in the meantime, to, uh, to show some or mount some photos and have a basically look at what we've sponsored, look at what we've put together as a commission and hang that in some of the spaces while they're vacant, while we're waiting for a local artists to uh, accept our challenge to come out here and, <laughs> and hang, some, hang some work. Um, let's see. That would be a good interim uh, project. I think, Melissa, you're going to spearhead that. Um, and speaking of which, thank you guys again for the uh, taking down of the Christmas tree all on your own, saving us from that wet, nasty day. And, and yeah, I know it's going to be cold the next day, so smart thinking. <laughs> Um, let's see. We did discuss talk. Uh, we did talk about getting some more Adirondack chair ornaments, and I think it was suggested that maybe at summer scene we could have a little station that uh, help us paint our next year's Christmas ornaments uh, section to have people just do one more activity there in, in June. And we did briefly touch on summer scenes location. Where is it going to be? We know there's a lot of construction at TB Hanna, and uh, it might be just a a little too congested, a little too muddy there, uh, here come in June. And <clears throat> finally, Harriet asked us to identify some specific locations at our, at our city's borders that would make a good spot for different artwork. Things that, you know, ex specifically, you know, where do you see it? And, you know, on, and what, on what side of the road do you see it? And uh, just so keep, in, keep a, in mind other commissioners as well, not just us public art committee people, but take a good look and say, you know, the more I think about it, this makes a good, this makes good sense to put something here and, and bring us that idea. We really appreciate it. That's pretty much it for uh, public arts. Thank you. Uh, Mike, would you just elaborate briefly about the relationship between the Parks Board and the Commission in terms of the mural and the decision making about, because we touched on that, but we wanted to wait and have you clarify that for us. So the public art in the park and especially the work through the public art committee really is a partnership between the Arts Commission and the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, a, we established a memorandum, memorandum of understanding between the two, the commission and the park board um, for, for the purpose of really guiding and also defining the roles of both the board and the commission. Essentially what it, what it boils down to is the Parks and Recreation Department, or the board and department, are responsible for the selection of locations for public art in the park. So they, they are the ones that provide us an approved list of here are the areas where you know, we will accept public art, and they also accept maintenance of the public art once it's installed um, to a certain degree. Um, then on our end for the Arts Commission, it is the Arts Commission role to um, create those calls for artists to select the artist and go through the vetting process with that artist through the creation of that art um, and to have it installed. Um, so it kind of boils down to the Parks Board selects the location, the Arts Commission selects the art, um, and it really provides a nice partnership because both are responsible for two key aspects of you know, the public art process, but there's no one group that is specifically in charge um, or has any you know, further sway over another. As we move forward with the public art process for our new members, we will have a, a public uh, hearing process 
Um, the public art committee will hold a public, or not a public hearing, but a public forum um, amongst arts commission members where the artists will be present. The arts commission members can ask questions. Members of the park board are invited to that meeting um, and then can provide any input or ask any questions as well. And then it is up to the public art committee members to vote to either approve or suggest any changes or modifications to the artwork at that meeting. Um, the second step would be once the arts public art committee has approved or voted to approve a piece of artwork, it then comes to the full commission. Um, the full commission would then have an opportunity to discuss. Uh, members of the public can make comments. They can, uh, as well as the Parks and Recreation Board members, can also make comments. And then once the Arts Commission votes to approve, depending on the amount or the cost um, of the piece of art itself, it, if it's lower than less than $10,000, um, the Arts Commission vote is the final vote and we proceed with installation. If the piece of artwork is more than $10,000, we proceed to the City Council needing to, needing to approve the, uh, the funding of that artwork. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, as it uh, pertains to public art on properties that are not under the domain of Parks and Rec, for instance, any new building that's going on in the city where the city owns the property, how if like the case of where we put um, the sculpture in front of K, K Jewelers or whatever that store is, um, that was a, a, a deal with the owner of the property. Is that something that's on the horizon for the, the you know parcel of land off of Dean and all that? Absolutely. Um, with each new private developer, we always keep open the the discussion of the possibility for the location of public art for the um, possibility of um, using incentive districts and certain um, incentive packages to include public art, much like the one at uh, 58 and Dean did. Thank you. So with Lauren's absence, we don't have a performance art committee report. In addition, the December meeting was canceled because of holidays and that kind of thing. So hopefully we'll have uh, a jolly good meeting, committee meeting this coming month and, and move on the sort of mission statement that's been drafted. <clears throat> okay, education event working group. Sharon, would you like to sure. bring um, us up to date? Well, you can see uh, upcoming events this Saturday. Uh, Jim Heath with Rock You America is going to be with his uh, band and instruction for, uh, and I think Melissa told us we had somewhere around 15 people read. I think you're at 21. Oh, well. That's great. Um, it was quite successful last year. This year, I think it will even be better because the space is better. Um, I will actually be hosting that event. Um, Jim will do, the, you know, his, uh, you know, instruction, and then I think he'll probably give a little performance like he did last year. Um, and then uh, Laura is going to uh, run the Kindness Rock painting day on February 16th. I'll be there to help in whatever way, although she's a rock painter, so it should be quite fun. And I believe we have a nice um, sign up list for that as well, maybe 15 oh, people, Lord. right? I think you've made it to 20 at least two. Okay, You're well, 18 or we're, 20. we're doing, this is just great. Um, and then I will be uh, um, facilitating the March 30th kite making day, which, will be, uh, you know, there's a couple different ways to go. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I haven't made a kite in probably 50 years, but uh, it should be fun. And um, so we, and then we're working on other ideas for the next quarter. And I think it's great that we can get, as Melissa said, get the um, Raymore review, get the items out there, the events out there so that we can pre-register well in advance of the classes. So. It sounds like we're gonna have a great year. I think the more people that attend, the more people <coughs> learn about it and the word spreads. So um, I think it'll be great fun and 
really thank you both for your support, but Melissa, you've done the lion's share of the putting all the word out there, and that's great. So thank you. Well, <clears throat> and actually, the sign-up is all in advance of the review even going out. So um, we can expect at least twice that much, I'm sure. By the <laughs> or anyway, a lot more. But obviously, uh, you all are on the right track um, when you're getting pre-registration without any real um, publicity and having those kinds of numbers. So you're, you're hitting the mark. That's great. Yeah, the only thing is, <clears throat> just for Laura's benefit, um, because we we um, are facilitating and we have to buy supplies, we when we were at Park House, we we cut cut off at 25 just for space reasons. Um, and now that we're at Center View, obviously we could do more. It's just that we'd want to be sure and get Laura comfortable with the size of class that she can instruct comfortably and of course supplies and I'll be helping her but Melissa perhaps you can talk with Laura offline and just chat about the parameters that she might be thinking about. When does the review come out? Um, it should be in your mailbox sometime this week oh. very soon we've okay. already gotten our copies here at City Hall okay. so yours are right behind ours. Well, to, to both of you, if, if there are things that the other commissioners can do to give support, um, you know, walk around and pick things up off the floor and that kind of thing, then don't hesitate to call on us. Um, and those of us who aren't involved with it, I mean, I keep trying to drop by, but I keep going to the wrong place, but I think I know now center view because you're not moving to City Hall on me this time, are you? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, please don't, don't hesitate to call the rest of us in and uh, especially if you have, if you know in advance that there are gonna be more people than you're gonna be comfortable with, then, then we stand ready to be told what to do. So, great. What time is Rock U? All the family art days start at 10 o'clock and run for an hour and a half. I mean, flexible. we're a little flexible. It could be a few minutes more, a few minutes less, but 10 o'clock uh, is when we hold all of our sessions. Okay, so we come to the staff report section. Um, budget update, Mike. Thank you. Um, wanted to just point out, I attached an updated budget to your packet. Uh, really the only item that has gone out since November 1 is for expenses at the holiday sing-along. Um, I thought we had for the investment that we made in it, I thought we had a great turnout. Um, really turned out to be a popular event and I'm looking forward to um, future events um, where we can have just as much success. As for our upcoming events, I think Commissioner Paris may have covered um, all three of our upcoming um, family art days. Uh, January 12th is the Rock You America, February 16th is the Kindness Rock Painting, and March 30th is the Kite Making Day. Um, all of those you can sign up by either uh, sign up online or contacting Ms. McGee um, to sign up. And that concludes staff reports. Okay. Uh, I'd like to just point out that uh, our budget for the coming year is is pretty well set, and we are, we have one vote to make tonight. But but we've obviously determined lots of ways to spend the money that we have uh, for the coming year. So I, I'm hoping, and um, we can talk a little bit about it when we have the motion about the um, enrollment in the. Uh, Missouri Arts thing, but um, be thinking about alternative ways to fund the work that we're doing. Um, we're, we've fast approached using up our budget before we hardly get the year started, so um, there are other options, and, and if you have a brainstorm about one of those, then speak right up. So, okay, thank you, staff. Um, we'll go to the consent agenda portion of things and I do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the November meeting 
So moved. Pat. Second. Thank you. All in favor, right hand up. Thank you. They are approved. Unfinished business. Now, Bob, would you talk a little bit about Little Library and your hopes and dreams and what we can do to help? <clears throat> sure. I wanted to get basically your guys' blessing to speak to the, uh, the people of Parks and Rec and see if they would like to partner with us to do this. And um, at, at this point, it's just trying to uh, see if they want to become involved and then over you know, a number of years, try to put one in each of our major parks. And once we get that, then see if we want to get homeowners associations to put them in their neighborhood. And that would be phase two, just trying to get phase one involved first, getting one place where someone can drive up and with their kids and, and pick up some books or drop off some books if they'd like without, you know, depleting any libraries, you know, from school or from our public libraries, but just a place where they can share, they can <coughs> leave a book, they can take a book if they're interested. And, um, and if you guys, I've sent, I know I've sent that PDF a couple of times uh, uh, to you, but if, if you're okay with it, then I will discuss with Mike what the next step can be in, in talking with uh, Parks and Rec. And I also, we've talked a little bit too about the other opportunity for the little libraries is distributing um, uh, reading material and uh, publishing kind of what's going to happen in the city. Um, so it, it is sort of an, that other side of that having a little mailbox um, oh, uh, yeah. could work out really well. Sure. <clears throat> and we could encourage local authors, including students, uh, to get copies of their work uh, put out in the little libraries. I think that's, that's an advantage that, that we could maybe push and sell a little bit. Absolutely, as, as well <laughs> as uh, advertise maybe some of our classes. Mm -hmm. You know, this, these are gonna be places where we would probably visit once a month to drive around the parks, make sure they're stocked with books, and while we're there, grab any, <coughs> any flyers that Melissa has and put them in, make sure maybe the, uh, the review is in there as well. So, and, and as, as well as hopefully one day a map saying, oh, th this, is, this is this one. There's, there's four more, and they're over here, so go visit them if you'd like. So, uh, do you have any, uh, have you developed any nat natural allies on the parks board so far? Have you identified any? No, not as of yet. Right, uh, right now, I just wanted to get you guys to, to, to approve it, and, and, and if, if you had any extra ideas, to, to send my way. Anyone? Comments? Pat? Um, Warrensburg has several of the little libraries and most of them that I've seen have either been near a community center and then there are some of the churches that have adopted them and it's in a well-lit area. It's got a little bit of shelter to help it too uh, in the bad months and there's a lot of traffic in and out and I think I know one of them uh, I think that's off college, uh, that the church actually takes care of that one. I see them restocking things from time to time. But they're in, they're in areas that are really easy to get to. Uh, and um, some, some of our parks are not easy for everybody to get, a, uh, get to. So maybe if we could get a church or two to say yes, or a price chopper or somebody where there's a high traffic area, that might help us too. And maybe they would be an ally and want to help fund it. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, in terms of approaching the Parks Board, uh, what do we do? Bob just asks to be on their agenda, or how do we do this? Most, what we would probably start with is staff would open up the conversation with the staff from Parks and Recreation. That way we can at least get a feel for how uh, receptive they are to the project um, and to to what degree they would be willing to look at locations in some of their parks um, we'd, we'd like to at least engage staff first just because if we engage you know the park board then we we don't really have the resources and the tools ready to go to create a a proposal um, versus if we're able to at least put staff in front of it we can we can start that research early So myself and Melissa being from the communications department, we would reach out to Nathan Mustine and most likely Steve Rulo from the Parks and Recreation Department 
Um, Nathan is the Parks and Recreation Director. Steve Rulo is the Superintendent of Parks, so he's in charge of the physical care and maintenance of the parks. Um, and so he would be a, a good person to talk to to talk about what possible locations he would envision or if there are areas that are, you know, the high traffic areas that we spoke about. And so, um, we don't we don't really this is not a formal kind of thing but uh, unless we hear um, objections or that kind of thing then I think we're uh, asking you Mike <laughs> to start with Nathan and and uh, see if we get a friendly response from him um, and maybe the two of you could go and meet with him at some point and Bob could do his wonderful spiel about the little libraries so absolutely okay all right, so we're moving along on that. That's exciting. Um, all right, any other unfinished business that anyone wants to bring forward? Then we need to deal with uh, new business, and the first item is the budget amendment um, having to do with the public art budget and the piece that we originally uh, thought we would be commissioning for the new Hawk Ridge Park, but Timing is everything. Um, so, Mike, do you want to speak a bit to this and uh, let the rest of the commissioners know where we are? The, uh, so at the <coughs> August 2018th me meeting, the commission voted to approve the FY19 budget, which directed funding for this current fiscal year. Um, that budget included a $7,000 al uh, allocation for musical elements at Hawk Ridge Park. The purpose was to be part of the inclusive playground at Hawk Ridge Park. Um, which at this current moment we're looking for community donations to help fund specific elements. So it's not just the musical element, there's also some of the other play elements. Um, shortly after the budget was approved though, the Parks and Recreation Department received a $135,000 donation for park improvements at TB Hanna, which is where we hold summer scene and they have the farmer's market. Um, the goal with that donation from a group called Variety KC was to include um, not just an inclusive playground, but to allow Raymore to be the first in the state of Missouri to have an inclusive spray ground as well. So this would be a water feature, this would have a playground as part of it, um, and, and that's what that donation was, was given for at TB Hanna, and this accelerated the project. Initially, um, this was going to be a, a little bit further down the road, but because of the donation, TB Hanna is now currently, um, they are putting kind of the last you know, dots on the I's and crosses on the T's to put the bids together to send out for construction work. And so we're expecting construction to start within the next two or three months at TB Hanna um, because of this donation. Um, construction is estimated to be completed by July on the water feature and then a little bit later in the summer with the full playground itself. Um, we are not expecting construction on the playground at Hawk Ridge Park to start until well into the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020 because, like I said, we are going to be going out to the community for donations to help fundraise for that inclusive um, playground portion. What this budget amendment does um, is in, in 2018 when the commission voted to, to donate money to the Hawk Ridge Park program, the intention was that there'd be a musical element there um, sponsored through the unlimited play program. The budget amendment would take that exact same amount of money, would purchase the exact same musical elements from the exact same program, um, variety or um, unlimited play, but rather than have them be at Hawk Ridge Park and part of Hawk Ridge's inclusive playground, it would now be located at TB Hanna and be part of TB Hanna's playground. I've included in the packet a kind of a rough sketch or a, a, a drawing of what the Parks Department intends for the layout of that park to look like. I say a rough sketch only because what most likely is going to end up happening. Um, so if you'll notice kind of the, the square of TB Hanna, on that south side you see the station house. That's that house that's currently standing there. That's going to become a historic element. Um, where we'll make it look like the old um, train station. The depot, I know everyone is very familiar with, um, where we have summer scene and then the farmer's market just on the north side. 
if you notice the kind of diagonal sidewalk that bisects the whole park from the depot all the way up to that north uh, west corner the spray ground area is that that is where we will um, for sure have the spray ground located what most likely could change though is that playground instead of being located that far south it may move to the north side of that tree line um, they'd like to preserve that tree line and so we know that that's not going to be going away but what the intention of the parks and recreation department is in order for this to be a truly inclusive playground they have to build a fence around the features um, that is a requirement through Variety KC. It's a requirement through Unlimited Play because um, in some cases, as these children are playing, um, they have to have still a physical barrier around some of the play spaces. Um, and so for it to be inclusive, we need some sort of a fence. Because we have these two items currently mapped out as fairly spread out, to save some cost on that fencing, they're going to be moving them closer together. and so. While this map is, is, is as complete as it can be, what I do anticipate happening is that playground feature will just move north to the other side of that tree line um, to be closer to the spray ground, but will still be part of that, you know, that shade of those trees and also gain some shade on those trees on the, the west side. That, that would be a good estimate. Um, the, the pump house itself, I think, is also going to be moving back a little bit. Uh, I say back, but a little further south and east so that it's closer to the depot. Um, but we can't move it too far back because there is an easement that runs straight through the middle of this park. We can't build anything on top of. Um, and so we're going to keep that pump house, you know, shifted just a little bit. But most likely where that restroom concessions wording is is where that playground will be located. What is the fence going to look like? I mean, we anticipate it's going to be a four foot um, black aluminum fence. So it's going to be kind of what you see. Um, it, it's kind of the, it's not wrought iron, but if you know it, it's kind of the individual spindles and then just the flat fence look. I'm, I'm not sure. Most likely. And right to the right of restroom and concessions, is that the pump house, that little red? I can't read that. Yeah, so that is that it will be the pump oh, okay. house, concession stand, and restrooms. Oh, all three there. Okay, got it. <clears throat> Other questions? Comments? If we, um, as part of our uh, donation towards this project, would we be able to identify somewhere in, I mean, have we identified exactly where the money would go or is it going into a general fund and they'll just use it towards something? The, no, the money would specifically be going towards the two musical elements um, that would be located at this park. But um, I guess without seeing what they're talking about as far as musical elements, are the, I mean, well, we, the, the Public Art Committee has seen what those musical elements will look like, and it's part of the catalog um, that when approved through for the Hawk, it, it, the exact same musical okay. elements that were going to be located at Hawkridge. Um, and the, the catalog, and I believe we still have, um, I didn't <coughs> include the catalog in this budget amendment, but um, it, it'll be the exact same items that were approved in the budget. Will the um, Arts Commission have some identification on there that it's been donated? A absolutely, okay. absolutely. So, Mike, could you perhaps send something out uh, to the m other members of the commission showing them the pieces that we've right. identified? And um, if, if you go online um, as well to our website where we have, where we're accepting donations for Hawk Ridge, um, they're, they're also, they have all the individual play pieces kind of lined out and what the, the cost is, the, or I say the cost, what the donation amount is to, um, to, for those individual pieces. And those musical elements are included there, but I, I can also grab a brochure after the meeting today. Um. Any other comments or questions? Anybody from the committee? No. 
then I would entertain a motion that we uh, approve, and what are, the wording for this is not switch, relocate, reallocate, that's right, I knew it was not switch, uh, that we reallocate uh, the $7,000 in our <coughs> budget from the Hawk Ridge Park site to the TB Hanna Station site. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Tim? Second. Second, Sharon. Now, any other comments or discussion? Then, all in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you all. Um, and now, Mike, are you to prepared to talk about the MACA membership? Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Um, so for the last four years, the Arts Commission has been a member of MACA, which is the, and I have to double check my notes so I don't butcher their name, uh, the Missouri Association of Community Arts Agencies. Um, it is a great agency that includes members from all across Missouri. Um, and these include agencies um, that are standalone 501c3 agencies, that include um, organizations like yourself that are city sponsored, as well as uh, private agencies that are, you know, endowments or privately held organizations in different cities, all in the pursuit of supporting the arts in our state. Um, they provide a number of great networking opportunities, resources, grants. Um, there, I know a couple members of the commission have been to the uh, the conference in Columbia, um, as well as Melissa and I have both been to the annual lunch that they have with some of their executive directors and other members. Um, they also have a great lobbying program. So as part of our membership, we are also supporting a, an arts um, lobbyist that works at the Capitol with some of our state representatives and senators to ensure that programs like the Missouri Arts Council is still fully funded or well-funded um, and that programs across the state also receive a good um, chunk of state funding in some cases. Um, it's a great organization. Um, staff is fully supportive of it and would like to uh, to be or like to continue to be a part of it. Any questions? I think uh, at least three of us have been of the commissioners have been, and um, it is a great networking. If we can still use that term, uh, opportunity to meet with folks from like organizations, and and we have. Um, as part of our budget, um, there's that $650 item for professional development, which I think is where we have spent some of that money in the past. That's correct. Correct. So I hope there'll be opportunities this year for other members of the commission. Uh, any other comments or questions? Then the chair entertains a motion to approve the membership fee of $50 to MACA. So moved. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand, please. We're unanimous again. Great. Okay. Any other specific business to come before the commission at this point? Uh, it is then time for commissioner comments, That if we haven't already made our comments. <laughs> so, uh, Yes, um, I'd just like to put this forth. Um, the officers of Tri-County Art League met today, and we have decided uh, this year we're working with parks and rec. All of our events and things are going to be held at Centerview. Um, this year we are going to open up. Uh, we have generally uh, two workshops and two open studios each year. Uh, for members and anybody else who wants to attend and so this year we would like to approach the Commission and parks just to make sure that um, it's something that we'd like to advertise to open up our workshops and open studios to the public and if as long as the parks department is happy with our uh, insurance certificate and we you know we come to terms on the dates um, We'd like to um, ask Melissa, perhaps, and the commission to advertise this on our Facebook page. So um, once we determine the exact dates and what those workshops are, we'll, we'll be back in touch. But we just wanted to put that out there so that pe the commissioners knew that we'd be doing that.
No further comments? Then the chair um, is open to a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, staff, as always, for everything. Oh, you guys are staff. That, yes, oh. when we say, 